Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cam and Otis show. Uh, really excited for today's guest. We got uh, Josh Bynum, good friend of mine on the show. Uh, really excited to have you join us, Josh. Uh, Josh is an amazing, really interesting guy, uh, different type of entrepreneur than we normally have on the show. Uh, definitely more into like the side hustle type category. Uh, Go, I graduated from nursing school, actually, corrected me on that earlier. Uh, Going to be a registered nurse here in the next month or so, selling candles, flipping tires, all sorts of fun stuff. So, uh, Josh, thanks for joining us on the show. Good morning. Nice to be here. Yeah, well, you know, I, I wanted to start off uh, just getting a little bit of background on, uh, you know, what kind of projects you're working on right now? What are your different businesses? Just give us a quick intro on that. Well, I'm a full-time diesel mechanic. Um, I run a shop for a concrete company. Um, on the side, I started a tire company. Um, about two years after that, I started a candle company. Um, <clears throat> and, I, and I just finished up with nursing school. So I'll have that going here pretty soon. Um, I have a different model than most people and it's go slow and then build. So that way I don't end up with a whole bunch of debt. So I mean, it's been going pretty good. I mean, no loans. I don't owe anybody anything. So I'm free and clear with everything that I've made. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is the best way to, to start off a, a business. Now, I mean, I shouldn't say the best, but I mean, because everybody's different, right? But uh, boy, if you're free and clear of debt, that is that is really awesome. So uh, I just congratulations on on doing that and being at that level right now. So, uh, but you know, one of the things that I, I always find interesting when people have multiple gigs going on is how do you manage it? That's the big question everybody talks about is, is how do you, you know, People have people struggle managing one thing, and you've got you know four or five things. So how how are you managing your time? Well, I, I think in my case, um, it's been helpful that I don't sleep much, and I haven't for like twenty years. Yeah, you know, I raised my kids on my own, and working in the concrete world, I got used to getting up and going to work at three, four in the morning, and I don't go to bed till after my kids' uh, practices before. So we get to bed at like ten o'clock, and people look at me like I'm crazy. Um, but I would study and everything while I was at their practices. So when, when school kind of came to an end, I was still used to having that amount of time. And my body is like, nah, you're not going to sleep. So I still go to work three, four in the morning for the concrete company. And I get off two, three in the afternoon. And I was like, Hey, I'm kind of bored. And, uh, so I didn't know what to do with myself. So it was two years ago, I started the tire company and I got with my work and I said, Hey, if I can get you, uh, tires a little bit cheaper than what we're getting um will you guys buy tires through me and they agreed so i kind of jumped off on that um and i started off uh, i mean i used a credit card and i knew they would pay me within 15 days so i bought them on that and paid that off right away and then i had a little bit of money to work with and then mm -hmm. so i do that in the evenings and on the weekends and it's not an always everyday thing uh the business does grow a little bit um, and then when I completely finished school, <clears throat> I was like, well, I got more time on my hands. What do I do? I still have my kids. They're older. And I was like, I have my wife, but she doesn't always want to be around me. I mean, you know, the husband and wife thing, like give me my space when you're home a little bit. Um, so I was like, well, I'll start doing candles. It's simple. I'm still home. We can still spend time together if she wants. Um, and I, I do have a new baby, so she can come out there while we do it. So I was looking for something a little more simple. And not, you know, that I always have to be on the go. So that's, I kind of just balance everything out, you know, so I still have family time and work time. You know, it's got to be, got to be nice having that natural advantage. I feel like I, every now and then I, I talk to somebody, you know, a business owner or anything like that. And I'm like, yeah, I sleep three hours a night and they're wide eyed still every morning and excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how you carry that kind of energy. So you got a nice little natural advantage there, Josh. Yeah. I mean, I'm not always excited to get up in the morning and sometimes I oversleep, but I mean, once I'm up, it's it's time to go. And I think last night I stayed awake till like 1 30, 2 o'clock in the morning. I, I laid there and I could not fall asleep. And then I was back to work this morning. So, and here we go, a whole day of work and I'll be totally fine and probably won't be able to fall asleep tonight. So it does help. I'm, I'm curious on that because then, uh, you know, uh, what you said there makes me think a lot back to a lot of things we talked about last month, uh, our theme for, uh, July uh, was growth. And one of the main things we talked about a lot for growth was discipline. And it sounds like that's what a lot of your time management is. It's like, look, somebody's got to go to work, somebody's got to get there, and it's going to be me and kind of having pride in that routine. Is that is that true? Well, a lot of it is I set a ton of goals for myself. Um, 
as you know, which isn't part of this podcast, but I, I was a homeless teen and, and I went to 17 different schools and I had a lot of bad things happen to me as a kid. So what I use is small goals. So when I was 18, I wanted to own a business, but at 21, I became a single father of two boys. So that was not going to happen. So when it finally gets to the point they're old enough, I got with my wife, things got a little bit easier. When I decided that I was going to start the tire company, I was like, well, I hit one of my goals. So I use the, the next goal. Well, I'm going to start another business. Um, as of last night, I was looking to buy Jumping Castle. So I have something else to do on the weekend. So um, I ordered those last night. I'll have, probably have them in a couple of months. And so basically, I just set little goals for myself. And every time I set a new little goal, it gives me drive to get up the next day and, and keep on working. And I might not do these forever. But my goal is to build something so my kids have something, so my grandkids have something. And so maybe in like 10, 15 years, I can retire and I probably won't retire, but at least I'll be able to. That's kind of my, I think I'll go nuts just sitting around. But it is all about drive and setting goals, at least to me it is. I know everybody's different. Yeah, that's, uh, first off, man, I'm, I'm, am I like becoming a Josh fan or something? I don't know. It, I feel weird saying this, but but. Uh, I know that you're not my age. And if you're thinking legacy already, you're light years ahead of anybody else in your peer group. I can, I can just tell you from experience, most people don't start thinking about legacy until they hit 50 or they have a significant life event, you know, like cancer, car wreck, something like that. Then they think legacy, but you just keep piling it on Josh. And, and what I, what I, what I'm interested in is how do you figure out, I mean, you just mentioned bouncy castle, which that sounds like a lot of fun, but how do you, how do you decide? I mean, diesel mechanic, nurse, similar, but different. Uh, you know, all these sort of things. It's not like, it's not like you're in this, this track. So I'm just curious, how, how are you picking these things out? So, no, I mean, I know this isn't about my past, but uh, when my mom got with her ex-husband and he passed around, he was a mechanic and he used to force us to come home from school. School got out at 2.12, we were home by 2.20, we worked till 10 o'clock at night. Um, so that's how I got into the mechanic thing. And when I was 18, I went through like 12 jobs in a year and I'm like, man, how am I going to do this? And I got a chance in Ready Mix Concrete and it stuck. And I've been there and I worked on cranes for a little while. And I came back to Ready Mix. So I think that has to my mind worked with it because I was forced to be around it when I was a kid. Um, when, when I was a kid, I was also a trafficked kid and molested for years. So I decided I wanted to help people. And so that's why I wanted to go into nursing and I wanted to go to the pediatrics. So now I'm second guessing because I have little kids. So my goal of going into nursing was to be able to help people. And although I'm second guessing the pediatric thing right now, because I don't know if I can go see sick kids and then go home to mm. little ones and, and keep my composure. Um, so my legacy is basically what I want to do. And I don't even know if it's a legacy. It's just something that I truly want to do is to help people. And if I can make these companies go and take off and get bigger, my, my goal is to build a small town of little homes and be able to help people who want to get off the streets or want to get off drugs or people who need to get out of bad relationships or unsafe places. And um, so that's my goal with building all of these. On top of, you know, building something for my kids is I wanna build a place where people can go and be safe. Um, and my ultimate goal is to build a theme park, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna reach that goal, but that is my ultimate goal. But those are the things that drive me. And it started many, many years ago because I was never gonna let myself be the victim I don't go off of, well, the world's against me and I can't achieve something. I don't let that thought process enter my mind. So although I don't have a lot of money because I keep on reinvesting, I don't live paycheck to paycheck and where I did 10 years ago. And to me, that is the, the greatest thing so far. That, that's awesome. And I just got to build the theme park. You've already got uh, a lot of the skills. Let's see, you're a diesel mechanic, uh, concrete, uh, do you know how to weld? Uh, that yeah. probably, no, let's see there, there you go. Welding the roller coaster <laughs> together and, and you're going to be a nurse. So you got the first aid, the first aid shack all covered. You, there you go, man. You can start it's, it right now. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work. I got to sell a lot of candles. <laughs> I mean, I have to sell a lot of candles to buy some. Have you done the math? 
No, but I mean, I did. <laughs> so my goal was in between Tucson and Phoenix, like Eloy, um, Casa Grande, where they keep on talking about it, but nobody does it. Mm-hmm. So and I was looking at like 200 acres, and it's like a million dollars for 200 acres in some spots. So I just know that's a lot of candles. <laughs> That's like 500,000 candles or 600,000 candles yeah. just to uh, make enough profit to uh, to buy it. But it's not impossible. I mean, Yankee candles, they make, they use 275,000 pounds of wax a day. So that's wow. somewhere around 500,000 candles a day. So it's possible. I just, it, it'd be a long ways from for now. Mm-hmm. I'm not Yankee candle. So <laughs> I'm sort of, I'm sort of leaving the company, not, not Yankee candle. So. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm curious because, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, your passions and your drives uh, towards helping people. Uh, do you do you look at each business in that kind of light as well? Because that's something I think is really common for a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs, where the passion comes from helping people and wanting to solve that problem for them. Like, you, I mean, you did you go around visiting people around Tucson, hopefully not us, and said, gosh, this home smells like crap. I need to start selling candles around or how'd that go? No, I just try to think of things that I can achieve. Because, like, as, as I said earlier, like, I went to 17 schools and never got past 10th grade. You know, at 23, I went back and got my GED. So, <clears throat> I mean, I've had a lot of different ideas. I don't know if you've seen on Facebook, but I was like, hey, I'm going to start making beer. And the, the science guy that was going to help me with it, I haven't really talked to him since after he said yes. So I bought the stuff, um, and then I haven't really heard from him after that. So that idea is probably not going to work because I'm not the huge science biology type of person. Um, and I've had multiple ideas, but which ones can I make work? Um, that I can buy jumping castles and I can rent them out. I can set them up. I can break them down. That's an income. Um, I've been doing tires forever. So it's something that I can physically do or teach somebody else to do. Um, the candle thing, I knew nothing about. And there's a lot more to it than I thought. But once you get one down, then you have that one and you can move on to the next one. And, and it's a little bit simpler than beer. So... I just try to think of things that people use, you know, wax melts and candles. I see everybody that uses them. So that's kind of a lot more households than just something random, such as selling tools, which I did for a little while. Um, but that's only a certain demographic of people, which makes it harder to make an earning. So for me, that was I, hard. I can, relate, I can relate to that a lot because that's one of the things that drove me towards uh, agricultural business and farming originally was, well, everybody eats. Like this is this is a problem that everybody has. Well, you might not think of it as much of a problem, but getting that food to people's houses on a daily basis or to the grocery store on a daily basis, that's a problem that's never going to go away. So uh, those are definitely really interesting uh, places to start. And it you know goes back to a, a fundament, and fundamental excuse me uh, aspect of you know prospecting for a business, which is a demand-based business where it's going in finding what the demand is and then building the business model around it and I love that you've combined that with this you know bootstrap mentality of okay hey here's what I have I've got you know I've got a hundred bucks to start off these candles I flip 10 candles I can go you know get 50 more candles that type of mentality is just a really awesome thing to see yeah, it's it's been a lot. I do a lot of stuff at the swap meet. I, I buy and sell stuff at the swap meet. <clears throat> and although I give up my weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights when it is going, I mean it's it's a way to give me income in order to be able to start all these things without loans. And um, the reason I decided to do that is I've seen a lot of people who get loans and then they're constantly stressed out. Well, I got to make this payment. I got to make that payment. And their life just becomes immersed in it. And it's it's a uh, don't know if I use that right but uh their lives just get so stressful and I didn't want that I didn't want like if I can't do tires next week then it's okay because I don't owe anybody any money you know I have tires sitting in my house right now that are waiting on somebody but I'm in no big rush because they're paid for I'm free and clear um so when they show up we can do them and it, whether it's you know six o'clock in the evening or on a Sunday whenever else is closed so that's the good part about being able to do that so it is able to help people so you're you're a uh, you're a good idea guy. I mean, I, I see it. You're like, oh man, I could I could do that, or let's try that. And what I'm really curious about is is how do you take the next step in the business? You know, okay. meaning because I, I, I have a friend of mine who who came right out and told me years ago that uh, matter of fact, I think uh, Camden, you were mentioning uh, Uncle Ben earlier. This was mm-hmm. this was something Uncle Ben said to me years ago that. Uh, he gets bored. <laughs> he, he starts a business and he'll run it to the point where 
now it's you know in the black and he's like i'm sick of this i gotta go find something else to do and he you know basically walks away from it for lack of a better way of putting it so i'm curious are you in that mode or or how are you getting to that next level once you hit profit well and I, I think that's kind of like so you do kind of get bored of it especially if it's the same thing over and over and over um but I think for me, because I have different goals, um, I don't know what his goals are, but because I do want to build a theme park and because I do want to buy land and start investing, but I don't want to use somebody else's money. Well, even when you get bored, <clears throat> for me, it's like, well, I have to keep on doing it so that way I can reach this goal. And so as long as I keep on putting one goal in front of the next goal, in front of the next goal, then it does keep me going. Um, I still have like 10 cents that I have not tried to make candles for because I'm trying to make other candles, but I'm also like, you know what, I need to break from that real quick, but I already have like 40 cents that we're using. So it's not, it's not like I'm giving up. I just like, oh, I need to do something else real quick. Why I still make the ones that I already know. So I don't know, but for me, it's just putting more goals out there. Like I want to build companies <clears throat> that our justice system is messed up. I'm, I'm going to go off topic here a little bit, <clears throat> but my brother was in and out of prison for like 25 years and by rights he deserved to be there and i and i don't make excuses for him um but when you get out as a felon it's harder to find a job mm -hmm. so when i build all these i want to make it so that way if you've done your time and you are trying to better yourself you can have a place to go you can try to get on the right foot and i can't guarantee those people will but uh one of my goals is um to be able to give them a place to go work so if i give up now then those people one day might not have a place to go work and and better their lives so to me that's how i uh i, I keep myself going instead of giving up sorry i, I tend to ramble on oh, a lot. oh no, no. no. That's, that's, that's awesome uh, what i'm what i'm really what i really wanted to not uh, curious about sorry because i gotta add this in before my next question uh because this is just one of those really cool things. It's always funny how this type of stuff works because dad, you and I just yesterday were having a conversation about the same type of business model that each of us have talked with two separate friends on our own about. So that is now five people who have this really amazing idea of these, these you know, communities, houses, that type of thing to provide pipelines for people in bad situations to establish themselves and get out of it. And it's one of those things, I think when you say that somebody else had that idea, some people could get defensive and go, oh no, it was my idea. You know, I wanna have ownership of this. But big picture wise, the reason I'm getting, I'm smiling so much about this because it gets me so excited is the fact that just in our circle, we know five different people who are trying to go do that. Like imagine how many there are in the country, how, in the, even in the freaking world that are going out with that kind of a goal. And if half of those people hit that goal and start building these communities, then that entrepreneurial impact can create some really, really big change for a lot of people. And I mean, damn, that's just freaking inspiring. So I wanted to make sure we hounded on that a lot because that's, that's what entrepreneurship is all about to me is going out and setting these big goals to go help people long-term solve long-term problems, not just crappy band-aid solutions, but actual fixes. So there's my soapbox moment for a second. <laughs> No, that's so uh well thank you for your soapbox camden uh <laughs> uh my my thought is you, you're you're very goal oriented which is awesome what what i see out and about you know talking to a lot of people is there's a a lack of that that focus and you know they're like well i don't know and this what if this you know they're they're the they're in that either yeah but mode or the what if mode that prevents them from doing anything like that so <laughs> what I'm, I'm curious about is is how you would or what advice you would give to those people because like i said you, you're like man this is my goal this is why i'm doing these things to get to these goals what would you tell these folks that are out there because there's a lot of them that are kind of like just swimming, treading water. They ain't even swimming. They're just treading water. Well, I, and I, and I think, um, well, if you have a goal, go for it. You, you might not be able to get it the first time. You might not be able to get it the second time or third time or fourth time or fifth time, but don't give up and, and try to find a way to, to get there. I think the biggest problem with people, at least that I have seen, I don't know if it's different from what you guys have seen, but I can only go off of what I've seen is people want it now. And there's no quick way from A to Z. And, and it's, it's building blocks. I mean, if you go out and you get a $100,000 loan to start your company and you have no customers or anything, 
you're going to be stressing out to pay that bill every month. And then I can understand, well, what if I can't do this or what if I can't do that? Um, and that's why I chose to do it a little different way. I'm not a big corporation. I don't have billions or millions or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, but it takes time. I mean, it's taken me three years and I have probably between the companies and stuff like that, like 40 or 50 grand. Now, I don't owe anybody any money. I have money in my, my bank account. I have money in the tire account, not a lot. But next year when my son finishes high school, if he decides, hey, I want to start building an entire company up more in a neighborhood, a shop, we'll have the money to put up and, and I won't have to take out that loan. Um, and, and I think that is what helps is I don't have to worry about. It. So if he goes and he doesn't make it, then yeah, we're out 20 grand or whatever it is, but we're not owing it to anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and we can start over again. I think for people who do the what ifs, it's because they want it now. And if it doesn't work out, well, they're going to be in debt. And, and so figure out a way, small little pinches to take off that, the scariness. So next week you go out and make 500 bucks or jumping castles. They're, they're fairly cheap. If, if you want to have 10 grand to start this company, start off with something that can get you to that 10 grand and uh, just realize that it's not going to happen today. It's going to take time. So, and that's, that's the only advice that I got with the what if is stop second guessing yourself and build slowly. Trust the process. That's what I always throw out there, right? It, you know. Yeah, it's trust the process. And, yeah. you know, a few, fewer words than what I said, yeah. <laughs> I'm really bad with words, so I have to, like, put out full thoughts. So. No, but what, what, what was so awesome about that is, is it gets the point across. Because, yeah, if you do this, this, and this, then you get that. You can't do this and then get that, right? I mean, it's it, it takes effort. And I think that's, to me, that's one of the biggest things. And, you know, I mean, quite frankly, we're all we're all in that microwave society, whether I can't remember what the microwave generation truly represents. But you know what? Even if you're not, that doesn't exist now, whatever these Z and Gs and Rs generation things are. I was going to say, if, if you're a microwave generation, I don't know what the hell I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure I, I can just say that uh, that's the only th thing that you're going to get right now is when you want a hamburger and you throw it in the microwave for 90 seconds guess what it's still 90 seconds you still ain't getting it right now so yeah. even that <laughs> yeah there's no you're not going to get just the gratification like right now and that's what everybody wants it's like and I, and I think social media I'm not trying to bring that into it but everybody posts everything and they want all those likes right now. They want all yeah. that attention right now. And when they can get it because everybody's on social media, that's kind of the way they expect everything to happen. And, mm -hmm. and that's not how it happens. So I, I think for a lot of people, that's what they need to learn is time. So if we could all become millionaires in a week, none of us would be struggling. That's right. So. That's right. Well, I, it, I'll be a little philosophical in this too, is, is that if you, if you start to realize, because we all, everybody watches, TV or Netflix, you know, some, something, right? 90% of the world does. I mean, there's people out there that, of course, don't, and they, they only read books, and that's good on them. But even that, you realize that the book ain't real, even if it's a biography. As you know, there may be things that aren't in there. There's things in TV, their TV shows, even when they're, they're uh, uh, reality shows, those aren't real. <laughs> And if people and, and social media, of course, ain't real. And if people start to put that separation in there, I think I think there's a lot more opportunity for folks to go, OK, I've got to in order to get to Z, I've got to go through these steps to get there. And I think that's a that's a big thing, because you're right. I mean, you can pick up your phone, scroll through whatever, whatever media app. And guess what? It's going to look like, you know, Grant Cardone, one that pops in my mind because he's been in my feed for some reason. I don't know how Grant, how'd you get there? Uh, but, you know, he talks about 10X. And I did this, this, and this in 90 days and I got $10 million. But he still did this, this, and this, and he did it in 90 days. And they, yeah. Yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, and it's, there's, 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 and that's what everybody wants. And people have to realize there's there's no now. Um, and you have to wait for a time. So like people are like, well, I'm going to start it right now. Well, maybe the market isn't good for that right now. 
Um, and I don't know a lot about markets. I'm just starting to learn. But like, I know I want to buy rental properties and flippers. And my goal is to build my retirement now. But right now is not a great time to try to find these properties because the housing market is insane. So do I go out and try to buy right now? No. And so I might have to wait for a year or five years or 10 years and, um, and, and keep on saving. And for somebody who wants to, let's say, build a salon, because that's what they do. Well, they might have to go work where they're doing, put away um, X amount of dollars every week. And, and then when the time is right, they have the money to, to start that, you know, and rent out other stalls or something like that. So they have to put a plan together. That's, that's kind of a big part of it too. Don't just jump into it without a plan. You know, uh, one thing that I, I kind of want to touch on there uh, is, you know, we were talking about social media and those type of things. One, just to solidify, if anyone out there listening to it, and people probably are demographic, wouldn't have too much trouble with this. But if you're doubting how fake these things are, I always like to tell people about this study I read like five or six years ago that showed that there is a correlation between the amount of images and posts that a couple makes on social media and their likelihood of not staying together very long. Like the more you're posting about your relationship, the less likely you are to be together. So I just always like to cite that as like this like really clear example of how people like to put up a facade. Uh, but the other thing that I want to touch on in like the social media area uh, is something that I, uh, I heard from uh, Deion Sanders the other day, listening to his podcast. He was talking about the reason that you get kids and he's talking about his college kids who can stay up all night playing video games instead of going to bed and you know getting up early and all that kind of stuff is because they don't do anything meaningful during the day. They don't accomplish any goals. They don't do any real work. And so then at, you know, eight o'clock at night when they hop on their video game and they start hitting those checkpoints and finishing missions, that starts hitting those dopamine releases that they're supposed to get during the regular day. And so it gets them energized to keep them going all night. You get the same kind of type of thing with uh, social media where you are getting these little dopamine boosts. I mean, shoot, everyone under the age of 30 is pretty much a dopamine junkie now from social media apps. Uh, but you're taking that away you're ta uh, sorry, excuse me, you're taking away the genuine, genuine release of chemicals in your brain for happiness that you get from accomplishing goals and all those really big, meaningful things. And you're replacing them with a shortcut. And it's a very addictive thing to where people can want to get this like short term happiness. I always just want to get something right now, right now, right now. But the reality is that's draining. It's not giving you any actual long term benefits. And so I think it's a really interesting thing of looking at it like that of trying to, you know, hack your brain I guess of looking at things of look instead of looking at the short-term stuff instead of looking at the social media and wanting to get that kind of a you know posting about my business to get likes to feel better it's about actually hitting those goals for yourself rather than trying to signal to everybody else and so I think that's just a really interesting thing I want to put a little bow on that uh, social media conversation uh, but what uh, one question that I really wanted to make sure I got as we're kind of talking about the different different business ventures, you know, the side hustles and all these type of different things, uh, you know, for people is how have you, whether calculated or gut or however, how have you looked at scaling versus new venture? Uh, I know we kind of talked about the boredom factor a little bit, but when do you know it's time to go start another business versus just doing more candles? How do you scratch that itch? Um, well, I do candles anytime I have free time. So anytime I have free time, I will, I will start making candles because the wife can be home. The kids can be there. The baby can be there. And I pretty much just take away from Netflix, which isn't even true because I have it on in the background or something like that. But any, any time that I am sitting around, not any time I lie, because sometimes I am just too tired. And I'm like, you know what? I need a break. Or when I'm studying for the NCLEX. But uh, anytime I have free time, instead of just sitting in the chair, just watching um, Netflix, because it's kind of a waste of time, even though it's enjoyable, um, then I will make candles. Um, when I feel like I have enough candles and I don't have a lot of orders, then I will go ahead and stop making it um, and go on from there. And if I have time, I will start a new venture. I started looking into porter potties and vacuum tanks, which I was trying to buy yesterday, but I lost at the auction. So I'll wait till I save up a little bit more money and I can pay for those in cash. Um, but so like the tire thing, when we lived in our old neighborhood, I was allowed to have a company out of my house. We had a garage in the back. People could come into my house at eight, nine o'clock at night. It didn't matter. Now that we live in an HOA, um, I have to be away from it a little bit because they frown upon having it out of our house. And I haven't, even though I can sell people tires and I can still do some, 
I can't do it as much. Um, and so I have to move away from that a little bit. I still sell all my tires to my work. So that income is still coming in. And that was about 95% of my business anyways. So that's still coming in. So because I can't do them at my house, I know that I have time to start a new venture. And when Devin, my youngest, gets out of high school, um, it's up to him whether or not he wants to keep on growing that. If not, then I'll find a store and find other people to, um, to grow that. So I know I have like a year before I really try to get further into that one. Um, the candles, it all just becomes on how many people are ordering candles um, and if I need to make more. I'm trying to work on the website. <clears throat> I'm absolutely horrible with computers. Um, me, websites, I, I can't even figure out how to figure out the shipping part. So I got some work to do on that. Um, but I figured once that picks up, I'll be making more candles or then I will hire somebody or find somebody to help me do that. Um, but in my free time is when I find reasons to go start something else. Mm -hmm. So I just base it on my needs at the time. Well, I think that's that's great. And, and whether you know it or not, you're doing one of the more important things in business that makes business successful, uh, whether you're consciously aware of it, I guess I should say. Probably not. It's, 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 it's cash, and cap, cash and assets. As long as you have cash and assets that have value, your business is always in the green, right? Or in the black. It's when your your capital, you know, that's why people go and get loans and things like that, and they start digging those holes. That's that's when their business starts to struggle, because, like you said, then they're more worried about paying that loan or, or this that and there because their their risk level is going up. What you what you what you've created with your businesses is you don't have you don't have that that risk. You control the capital, and oh, by the way, you've got assets. So if, if all goes bad, you could have a fire sale, sell the rest of your tires, and, and a fire sale for candles too. Ironically, uh, yeah. you know, and take care of those assets, and then get capital back. And that's that's the the genius of of business that so many people really don't understand and and blow off that simple fundamental. So. Uh, like I said, whether you're doing it on purpose consciously or you're stumbling into it, you're hitting the mark. So keep doing that and managing managing that positive capital and those positive assets because that's that's how you continue to be successful in your business. Yeah, I just understand. I don't like debt. I don't like payments. So mm -hmm. that that's where I go with that. Like I I, I don't like the stress of payments. So I, I do everything to pay off all my personal debt. Uh oh damn it really i thought he was smiling at me all right otis froze for a <laughs> no y'all froze i didn't freeze you froze <laughs> yeah. well good i'm back or you're back one of the one of the three of us are back uh I always, you always blame it on Tucson internet. So we'll just blame it on Tucson internet because Colorado oh, internet obviously is so much better. Uh, so much better. The air is thinner, so it flows better. <laughs> so, man, uh, Josh, this has been great. Uh, highly, highly educational and, and interesting. Uh, man, uh, a lot of stories and a, a lot of great ideas and and concepts that i think you shared so i appreciate that and I, i'm just going to kick us off with what i learned and and really uh ironically it is the philosophy of prime time and i did not uh you know Dion sanders throwing out some some very philosophical concepts as he's and and you know if, if you know Dion from back in his playing days i didn't know him personally but just some of the things he did He's got a lot of, yeah, don't be like me, I'm sure, as a coach uh, that, he's, that he's sharing. And just that little aspect of, of what, the, what anybody, I was going to say youngsters, everybody's a youngster to me. I've hit that, I've crossed that threshold, right? Uh, you know, so all these young whippersnappers out there that play video games, the, one of the reasons they do it is that's how they get that accomplishment fixed. So, uh, 
Yeah, wow. The philosophy of Deion Sanders. Prime time philosophy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to give him a call because that's he's going to have to write a book. Prime time philosophy. Uh, so as, as I continue to talk about Dion, I, I need to get off of that. Uh, You're going to go watch game film after this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh, what did you learn today? Um, that I might be doing something correct. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I... I go off of what I think. So hearing somebody else be like, hey, this is kind of a good idea. I mean, it's, it's nice to get that little, uh, that little insight back from some other people. And uh, so it makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> so, but yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Camden, what'd you learn? Uh, really? And this is something it's, this happens like every few episodes where it's this thing where I feel like I really should have known and then somebody said it like the perfect way and I was like oh my gosh but just using big goals to uh to inspire your discipline for the long term and then if you're in like a goal drought where you're not hitting any of those big goals set some small stuff up for yourself so you can build a little bit of momentum and keep yourself happy and if those all go towards your passion then that's a recipe for success right there Love it. Love it. Build on success, right? Pile on that, that win. Josh, how can people find out about, I mean, where can they order candles or stop? So right on? now, right now I, on Facebook, it's toward Alita candle company. Um, I've been trying to post on it. There's not a lot on there yet. Um, there is all the different scents. Um, there's a list of them on there and they can just send me a message. Um, and I'll get back to them. I check it multiple times a day. Um, hopefully soon the website will be up and then when that's up and running, I will put the link on that Facebook page. Perfect. So. And tires, if we need tires in Tucson, are they commercial tires or, or uh... well, I have car tires and commercial tires and it's right. Bynum tires. There's also a Facebook page for that one. Um, so you can same thing, send me a message or you can just find me on Facebook and you can send my personal account a message and I can still, you know, answer everybody's questions. All right. And then the final thing, ready Crete, you know, when my, when my diesel, uh, diesel concrete truck needs to get fixed, is that, is that under ready Crete? So I can't drop it off ready. Yeah. Ready Crete, right? Yeah. Ready, ready, ready mix, but no, I work for somebody else for this. I work for a different company. Ah, okay. for, yeah. I mean, ready I, mix. Golly, I should know that they've been around forever. I, I, get, uh, I get phone calls from different people across the country and they'll be having issues and they'll ask, and because I self-taught myself all of this. So it's, uh, I can't always help, but there's a lot of times it can help. I have people from parts companies that will call and ask me on older trucks and sometimes I can help them. So you can always send me a message on Facebook. <laughs> and, well, I'm uh, sniffing out another business right there. Yeah, if I can, there's a lot of owner operators. So mm -hmm. if you're an owner operator and you have a question on how this works or how you might be able to fix this or how you might be able to bypass this, then uh, if I can help, I will, because it does help somebody out. So, and then you can find Love me it. on any of those Facebook pages and send me a message. Even if it doesn't have to do with candles, you can still ask me about it and, and, and I'll still help you out if I can. That's awesome. Man, I appreciate it. I love, love the, your goals of where you're going, uh, that, that vision, you know, to, to employ people that have, uh, difficulty i'm not sure that's the quite the right word but they're they're in that box where they have a tough time getting jobs meaningful jobs so that's exciting that that's that that vision that you have so i applaud you on that and i really appreciate you taking some time uh out of out of this crazy schedule that you do and uh yeah thanks for thanks for being here josh and camden run us out Thank you all for listening to today's show. Special thanks to our guest, Josh Bynum, for joining us and our sponsor, Tribe and Purpose. Find your tribe, find your purpose. You can check out recent episodes of the Cam and Otis show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast, and check out a full archive at thecaminotisshow.buzzsprout.com. The Cam and Otis show is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks again, and we'll see you all next week.